Meet the Sheffields from the deep part of Texas. It's going to be tough from here on out. A family who have raised their own children on a diet of hard work. There's no time for joking around. And respect. Scatter a little bit there for them. I'm sure. For the next week, they'll take in two delinquent teenagers. I could go wherever the f I feel like, okay? I don't care, Mom. You're stupid and you're a f But will a week of living on the last frontier... <laughs> Feel an attitude I don't have an attitude. Keep on getting roots. I'll change you holes. Force these wow. teens onto the right side of the fence. Oh my god. I'm Danielle, I'm 15 and I'm from Orlando, Florida. You need to clean this room. This is disgusting. You can't even think it. Oh my god, get out of my room. Danielle is very stubborn right now. She thinks she knows everything. The chest is all, all hanging out of this. I'm Are you glad kidding you, me? I'm glad you noticed. No matter what I say, Danielle does not like authority from anybody. You're not going out. I, I could go wherever the f I feel like, OK? Seriously, you need to mind your own business. I don't ask you where you go. I don't really give a f about her feeling, and I'm only worried about me. You sound disgusting. I don't really give a f Knowing that my own daughter doesn't respect me, it's very hurtful. I feel we're enemies. Oh, my mom thinks I'm at the movies, but yet, yet does she know? Michael. We're clubbing. <laughs> Drinking, dancing, going crazy. <laughs> I've had lots of trouble with Danielle in school. What's this, anyway? Left unauthorized, which means she cut out of school. She needs to just, like, get a life and worry about herself instead of me. I mean, I'm old enough now to, you know, have my own life. If she keeps on this track, it's just going to get worse. She could get herself in a lot of trouble. I'm Chris, I'm 17, I'm from Westminster, California, I just don't give a f Christopher's not going down the right path, and it shows that you are failing. He doesn't seem to care about things. He just wants to do what he wants to do. Why do you have beer in your room? It's not beer. Hmm? I collect my money in there. I lie to her about everything. I'm never truthful with her. You know what? You're grounded this weekend. I'm okay? not grounded. Yes, you are. I don't care, Mom, you're stupid and you're a f Christopher doesn't listen to me. Doesn't care about anything. There's a lot of tension at home, and I'm sick of it. Chris! 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 You punch him, and it's the same thing. You end up right here at the table. Well, I think Mom's an ass and she tries to tell me everything to do, and I just don't like it. Where are you going? you. Come here for a minute. Come here. This is what happens every single time. He just takes off. If Christopher doesn't realize this week how much I go out of my way and I love him and I do things for him, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm hoping this brings back my little girl. If my own mom can't handle me, what makes this other family think that they have a chance? Are you gonna brush your teeth? Of course. If Chris doesn't get his act together, I think my next step is, is maybe put him in a military camp. I'm Larry Sheffield. This is Christy, my wife, and we have three children, Pate, who is 20, Kelsey, 15, and Nathan, who's 13. And we're from Sparger, Texas. Pate, come start pulling these posts up and lay them in the back of the truck. I was raised on a farm that actually sold some, you know, products, and the kids wanted some horses and things of that nature, so we have it but it is their responsibility to feed and water and take care of those animals. Dogs, chickens, ducks, horses. When my mom gets upset, she'll kind of give us this look. We all know what it means. You better fix it now or you're going to be in trouble. It's going to be tough from here on out. The children are responsible for their own rooms. They are responsible for their own laundry. We all five live here. We all five pitch in. Scatter a little bit there for them. Though. I'm sure. When everybody's in line, it can be a fun place to live. And if they're not, then there's going to be consequences to pay. 
a little bit of work never hurt anybody. Nathan, what are you doing, son? Come on. Well, I don't want to give them the impression that life is always going to be spoon-fed. Nathan, you better put a little backbone in, son. You hear me? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Come on. If I had advice for the two teens, it would be do what my parents say and do not lie. I'm not playing games anymore. I was glad Chris had piercings as well as me because, I mean, it didn't make me stand out as much. They don't know what they got coming to them. <laughs> nah. <laughs> been drinking little alcohol bottles. Chris, he was a little tipsy and saucy. I only got a little bit of <laughs> left. They do find it, and it sucks, but I'm gonna try to hide it. What are you thinking, Nathan? You nervous? A little. Me too. I don't know what kind of struggle we're gonna face with it, but we're gonna keep doing the same thing we've been doing ever since y'all were babies. I don't like doing any dirty work, so just wait till they start telling me to do stuff. I'm not probably not gonna like them already. I do not care about these people at all. Wow, it's like a ranch in their front yard. Are you serious? This is literally the middle of nowhere. They're here. here. All right, we'll meet them. Let's, Let's go. When the Sheffield family came outside, the thing that caught my attention was the dad. I mean, he was pretty hardcore and intense, and like he was going to be an ass. How y'all doing? I'm Danielle. I'm Larry. This is my hey, wife, Chris. Hey, nice to meet you. you. Chris. How are you doing, Chris? Chris wouldn't look me in the eye. It made me a little uncomfortable. Um, made me feel like he had something to hide. Y'all just put your bags right here, and then we'll go on in. And... I had Chris and Danielle leave their bags on the front porch <laughs> in case they brought anything that wasn't allowed into the house. Trust and respect are two things that you cannot buy, I cannot give you. You can't steal, you can't inherit. You have to earn those things. That's the mold by which we live. Okay? All right. Okay. Uh, there's no cussing. Y'all may say cursing or swearing. And we do not wear revealing clothes or inappropriate clothing. We don't show anything that doesn't need to be shown, okay? I got really scared because I'm thinking, what are they going to have me wear? Because they're going to take all my clothes. Okay, no smoking, no drinking, no alcohol. That's pretty much my life planned out right there. Drink. Really? Smoking, drink, that's it. Did you bring yours with you? Actually, I did not. You didn't? Mm -mm. OK, we're going to have an opportunity to see that, and I'll tell you what. These rules are not going to be bent. We are not going to do the things that we've just listed. And if we do, there are going to be consequences. What are the consequences? Well, they're not going to be fun. If we seem to have problems this week, y'all are going to become acquainted with a post hole digger. It's a tool that you use manually to dig a hole in the ground to put a fence post in. We're gonna go through your bag. Whatever's in there is no strike against you whatsoever, if it's given up now. But anything that's in there, it's gonna be found one way or another. When we were going over the list of rules with them and I saw looks on their faces, I thought it may be a little challenging. So this is this is outfit that you would wear every day? No, to the club or something. This is a no. I was almost embarrassed for me and for her because it was so revealing. OK, I'm going to take that, too. Are you serious? Yes. It's inappropriate. Now, look, I'm all about outfits, so I will be checking you out every morning you come down those stairs. If I do this, mm-mm. It's right back up. Let's, let's see what you got. Chris uh, opened his bags. I was not 100% confident or comfortable about the situation. You've been kind of busy, huh? <laughs> worked up a powerful thirst. I honestly don't know why I gave up those alcohol bottles. I was kind of already drunk. Nah, I think you saved them off later. I was thinking in my mind, holy shit, how am I going to get through this? I hate it. What do you hate? I wish I had it. You hate being honest? Nah. You hate giving it up? Yeah. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. That being thrown out, I'm going to throw this can out, OK? Yeah. I was proud of the little fella. So I wanted to let him see that, hey, I'm willing to give up something as well. And that was chewing tobacco. And me and you may chew some chewing gum this week together, but we ain't going to yeah. do no tobacco. All right. And we ain't going to do none of this. Is that a deal? It's only going to yeah. hurt for okay. a minute. All right. Going to tap this out, because there ain't much left in it. But... Look at there. When Larry laid the tobacco down, 
as a challenge to Chris to lay down his alcohol. I felt proud that he would do that because that's been a habit for him for years. Water the grass, bud. Pour it out, boy. You can do it. Doing this sober, it's not gonna be so good. It's gonna be like living in hell. We'll show y'all where you're gonna be staying. Coming up, a taste of Texas ranch life for the teens. You see the wet looking stuff? Start picking it up. And a teen rebellion for Christy and Larry. Danielle, wait. I'm getting annoyed. Ugh. Danielle. What's up, buddy? Daily chores around the Sheffield home are feeding animals, cleaning out the barns. Laziness is not permitted in our home. Hey. Sleep good? Yeah. Okay, is that what we're wearing today? Can I check it out? It's not gonna work. Why? Because it's a little bit unmodest. But I wear with a jacket. Well, let's just say if you do wear that, there'll be a consequence. When Danielle was trying to find a compromise with me, trying to get away with wearing that shirt with a jacket and everything, I didn't back down. Let's go see what. Mr. Larry says, I knew eventually that that shirt would be exposed. You're gonna go up there and put something on to cover yourself, or I'm gonna pick something for you. Okay. We weren't gonna start the morning off like this. Very nice. That's our job. We set a rule, enforce it. Um, after breakfast, we'll just oh, break out the barns, clean them up, see what else we can get done. After breakfast, they started outside to uh, do a few chores and feed the animals. Start with that. Look, let's go in, go in, and oh. then spread the feed there, and then walk down there and see if there's any eggs. <laughs> you gotta get way under there. You see any eggs? <laughs> These people have like a thousand different animals. I feel like I'm at like a zoo or something. It was really scary. Just don't rake it. Don't rake the loose stuff. What do you mean by raking? You see the wet looking stuff? We can start raking it down here. I'll start picking it up from there, and we kind of smooth this out in here, just kind of clean it up. It's disgusting how do people do that. It's like their house is made out of horse pretty much. There you go. Put a little ump behind it. He frowned a little bit at first and uh, wasn't really enthused, but uh, it needs to be done. Well, it's kind of like raking leaves. I just noticed his body language. Uh, he really, at that point, wasn't wanting to do this. Chickens like to poop on everything. I could tell. And by tomorrow, it'll be just as nasty. <sighs> you gonna puke? No, it's just really gross. Ugh. To the barn we go. We decided we'd go clean the big barn in there that needed just a little raking done from uh, hay that's been stored through the winter months. Here you go. I was kind of getting fed up because I feel like that was enough work for the day. I just simply want to rake this stuff up. I was just not in the mood to keep chores after chores after chores after chores. Before we leave this barn, Danielle, we'll have to gather some hay to take to the chickens. It was nothing fun at all. So, Chris, what you thinking about the farm life? I don't like it. Don't like it, huh? Not one bit. <laughs> I'm feeling attitude for something. I don't have an attitude. OK, I'm just asking. She was pissing me off to, like, the max, and I just couldn't take it anymore. Wait a minute. Yeah. Danielle, wait. Where are you going? I'm getting annoyed. You're... Danielle. I can't. Ugh. Danielle. You're annoying. Danielle, are you seriously going to follow me? I am going to follow you. Danielle got mad and left, so I said pretty much F it, and I'm just going to leave too. You're going to be a man soon, boy. And we need you to act like one. They need to be obedient to my wife and I because we're giving them instructions. Somebody's got to be in charge. And it needs to be a man, Christy, around here. It's gonna be a little different. It's gonna be a little challenging. You know, I think it's worth it. I think they're worth it. Let's just take his time, let them calm down. We'll gather our thoughts, get a game plan. I 
enough's enough. The game playing is over. This is my house tomorrow. I don't really care whose house it is and ask whose house it was. I really don't But you care. know what? I know you don't care, but this exactly. is my house. Exactly, so get that to your head already. I don't care. You sitting here talking to me isn't getting anywhere. And it's well, I'm just going to, I don't you're care. You're wasting your time. Nope, you're wasting you know what? your I'm time. I'm keeping you awake because you're not going to nap on my time. Whatever. Well, so I'm not wasting care. my time. My time is for you. It's her choice whether she obeys or disobeys. But either way, there'll be consequences. Chris, what's going on, man? Everything's going pretty good. I think I hit a nerve. Yeah, I don't know, it's a lot of work. I'm not used to all of that at once. We're not gonna continue in that behavior. Do you agree with me there's different ways of handling things like this? Yeah. To just throwing my hands up and walking off? There is, but it's the way I know best. After we'd given uh, Chris and Danielle a few minutes to uh, kind of get the bearings in their room. The teens who came downstairs. Chris, would you get them diggers there? I've chosen for the consequence of misbehavior and to be able to dig a few post holes around here. All right, Danielle. Here's your spot right here. Oh, my God. It's not oh, going to yeah. hurt you. These people pay good money for that look right there, girl, and you're getting it for free. Go ahead. It's not any fun. It requires physical labor. It'll make you probably think twice about maybe not doing that again. You and them post hole diggers are going to be the bestest of friends. I tell y'all like I tell my kids, you brought it on yourself. It's really hard to dig the holes because there's heavy mud coming out of the hole. Put some muscle in it. You can do it. It was a lesson of a consequence. You break the rule, there's a consequence. And have anything to do with the hole, but it was a life lesson. Coming up. You're going to use what you've learned in the last 36 hours to do something good for somebody else. Familiar tasks for the teens. There's going to be a little post hole digging involved. My hopes for day three was that Chris and Danielle would be focused on the job that we had to do for that day. What we're going to do this morning is go, uh, we're going to go try to do something for somebody. It's a task that needs to be done. And at this point in this family's life, uh, he's physically not able to do it. We were going to go over to um, our friends, the Brockers. Uh, Brocker had been battling with cancer for a while. So this is doing for others with the expectation of nothing in return, and uh, see how that feels. Knowing that we weren't going to get anything in return, I kind of didn't want to do it, and it really pissed me off. These are good folks. Uh, they're home folks to us. There's going to be a little post hole digging involved. Well, I was not really looking forward to it because my hands were sore from all the post holes I had to dig for consequences. And this is not about a consequence for a bad thing. You're going to use what you've learned in the last 24 to 36 hours <clears throat> to do something good for somebody else. Let's go get a few more really? things together. We thought maybe this would be an opportunity that um, the kids could have to go and give a little bit of their self to someone in need. We went over to my friend Brockers to build some corners where a barbed wire fence needed to be built. Down there where we came, came in, we're going to make a pretty much a straight shot from this point down to the highway where we're turned in. A little bigger than that, that'll give you something to start off of. I think digging post holes are a waste of time, and they should make a machine to do that for you. Just dig a hole straight down here, don't worry about how pretty. I just was like over it at that point. They didn't have a whole lot to say, just a big sigh. Brocker is a very close friend of ours, and he can't do a whole lot of physical things that he's used to doing. Good morning. How are you doing, ma'am? I'm Danielle. Danielle? James Brocker. Nice to meet you. Very nice to meet Chris? you. Chris? Hey, Chris. Hey, Chris, how you doing? This is Mr. Brocker here. Well, what do you think about the deep east Texas? I thought it was a great thing for them to see his winning attitude, spirit, not giving up, fighting to the end. Uh, back in May, on my 36th birthday, they, uh, I found out I had cancer. 
I couldn't believe it. I said, man, there's no way I have cancer. I've never even had a, a, a cold. During this time, this in these last few months, I've had so many friends step up and want to help me that it's, it's just unbelievable. Uh, people that I haven't seen in years, I have to step back because I, I get choked up. But, man, why would somebody want to just do that for me? I'm just an average, just everyday person. They say, well, man, you remember back a long time ago you helped me do this? No, I didn't remember that. But. I could lay down and feel sorry for myself. And I have a 13-year-old daughter I'm trying to raise the best I know how. And uh, what would she think of me if, if I just laid in bed every day and felt sorry for myself? You know, um, I'm not, I'm not going to give up. So I get up every morning and do everything that I possibly can. Regardless of his condition, he wasn't really letting his illness come over him. He's a, an inspiration to me. I'm just lucky that I do have friends, you know, can step up when I can't do something. Well, it was really nice that you came to sit down and get to know you better. Yeah, thank you guys for coming, really. <laughs> I want to go. Okay. <laughs> so we'll have this Chris, thanks, At least man. started by the end. <laughs> thank you, guys. I thought it was pretty amazing that a guy that's fighting for his life that has cancer at age 36 still walks around with a smile on his face, and he's always nice to people. And I get so mad over the little thing. So what we want to do is loosen it. They had a new outlook on their whole day. There was a determination to do something that was totally new to them and do it well. You could just see a glow in their eyes. He's got the big things in priority, and the big things of him is his family. To me, that's what it's all about. And that's what I want you to see, and I want Chris to see, and take that back home with you. This is not all about me. It's not all about you. I know. <laughs> but you've got to see that through your eyes. I can't see it for you. I know. I noticed a, a huge difference in Danielle and Chris as they continue to work. They worked as a team. They forgot about themselves. Two, two, three. And they were doing it for someone else. And they were enjoying it. <laughs> it made me feel really good inside and proud of myself. Like, face it. <laughs> Finally, you finished something. You did good. <laughs> If I just do things for other people now, maybe one time in my life when I need help, maybe someone would come and help me. I felt very proud of Chris and Danielle. And I'm never gonna forget this day. Coming up, Christy reaches out to Danielle. You're smart and you're beautiful and you have a lot to offer. And Chris surprises Larry. I kinda wanna go and build another corner. We can uh, take a little time, just me and you, and go fishing, just some relaxation. I wanted to spend a little one-on-one -on -one time with Chris just to find out some of the things about him. I kind of want to go build another corner. You want to go build another corner? Yeah, I, I kind of like building things. I, mean, I think it's great, passing up a little fishing. Let's go finish. I was surprised when Chris said he wanted to go to Brockers to finish the corner. I think something has gone off in Chris's way he thinks. You ready, man? After seeing Mr. Brocker so happy of what we've done yesterday, I decided to go finish what I started and to build the fence. Go ahead and get your diggers here, and we'll mark us a place to start. You're going to have to be tougher than a pile of dirt. <laughs> okay. Keep on getting roots. I'll trade you holes. He kind of run up on a little obstacle in his hole. The look on his face was he was a little bit frustrated. Oh, well, you don't quit on me. You get your drink of water, let me hit a lick, and then you can hit some more. Teamwork, man. Don't quit. I ain't gonna quit. When things are a little bit difficult in life, you don't just roll over and quit. You either try harder or try a new method or ask for help. I, this thing called life gets too heavy. I kind of like this pole sometimes. We feel overwhelmed, and before long, we just want to give up. Yeah. What do we get accomplished when we give up? Nothing. Nothing. Come on, let's get this pole. It's a heavy pole. How do you think we ought to do this? Teamwork. Teamwork. Lift it over and on three, then drop it. One, two, three. It kind of felt good to help Mr. Brocker out with finishing his fence because I never took so much time and to do something and to do it right. Let's finish strong. Finish together. I don't think 
Chris could have done anything or said anything to make me feel better about him grasping something from this experience than the decision he made to go back and finish what he started. Am I proud of your work? Yes. But I'm proud of what's going on inside you. Are you proud of yourself? Yeah. That's a good thing, to be proud of yourself. Yeah. You've accomplished something good. I sincerely hope that when you go back home, you know, some of these things carry over in your, in your personal life, in your relationship with your mom, your brother. Do you, do you think that's possible? Hopefully. You willing to give it a shot to be the different Chris? Yeah. I hope that you are willing. You're right on the verge of the, being a man. Responsibilities are going to change, and I'm encouraged by what I see in you, Chris. I'm proud of you. I believe Chris gained, gained confidence in himself that he could accomplish something. There was, there was a light that went off in that boy's face, and he realized, hey, this is good. And I believe that, uh, I believe that he's going to take this stuff back home with him and make a difference there. Being you? Yeah. Today, we're gonna do a little gardening stuff um, down at our church. Okay. I do I do the gardening and things like that. And so you mentioned a few times that you garden with your grandma. I was hoping that Danielle and I spending time together would give us a more intimate time one on one. I will dig the holes. Are you okay. Yes, because I don't want you to think that all you came to do is dig holes because you didn't. Okay. okay. Because the whole digging that you did, that was really consequence and stuff. But today is just, you know, you and I spending time together. So you'll help me plant, I'll dig, and you help me plant. Oh, okay. yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. When Christy told me that she was going to be digging the holes for me, it made me feel that she had a lot of respect for me, and it made me feel good. So what kind of stuff do you and your mom do? The only time we usually hang out is when she's dropping me off at my friend's houses. Mm-hmm. It's so, like the car raids. <laughs> do you want to hang out with her more? Um, yeah. Maybe you can step in there and say, hey, look, you know, mom takes on a big load, you know, out of respect and love for her. Help her out some. Yeah, not to just think of her as being just there. Like, I need to spend time, more time with her and stuff. It was good just to hang out as girls and talk. When you help someone and give them your time, you're planting a seed there it's for them that they'll always remember that. And those are the best moments. Those moments like that, I cherish forever. I mean, if somebody wants to sit around and talk about about you or me or anybody, wouldn't you rather them sit around and talk about the good things that Danielle's yeah. done and not the bad things? Yeah. I came here thinking, you know, I was just gonna do whatever I wanted and just mess around and stuff. And like, actually, I seriously like learned a lot of things. I'm glad. You have a lot of potential. You're smart and you're beautiful you. and you have a lot to offer. I want you to realize that that's on the inside and I want it to come on the outside. I think she was really taking it in and listening and I, I hope that it continues to stew over in her mind in the future. You're like yes. my second mom. Well, I mean, yes, we're close now and I, and I love you to death. Thank well. you. Coming up. The last time you told her, your mom, I appreciate it. The teens hear some harsh words from home. You know, everything in that letter is true. It really is. Dry your hands there and we'll go outside and chat man. Yeah. Chris had gotten a letter from home from his mom, and I wanted to give it to him. We've got a little something to come from home that I thought you might want to look at. And that's a letter. It's a letter from home. I'll give you a chance to read it. And if you'd like me to kind of leave you alone and let you have some time by yourself, I respect that. If you want me to stay here, uh, it's up to you. I'll, uh, I'll stay. I think it gave him a chance to, without any rebuttal, to hear from his mother the way she felt. Dear Chris, I love you very much, more than you think. I go out of my way to do things for you all the time. You never think about me. I work very hard and try to do my best. I hope things will change. Maybe help me out and be a nice person. Maybe in your heart you will see how easy you have it. Love, Mom. When was the last time you told her just Hey, Mom, I appreciate it. I thank you for... It's been a while. What do you think? It's not asking too much maybe to tell her that. Yeah. 
Just keep doing what, you, what you've been doing here, what you've showed me here. Like when you chose today to go and complete something that you started. I'm proud of you. Show mom what you, what you can do. Uh, Show them what you found out inside of you, okay? Do you think you can do that? Yeah. I know I haven't been treating my mom the way she deserves to be treated. She deserves a lot better. You good with it? Yeah. Well, let's go, Chris. I believe Chris started to see that he could make a difference. I hope he goes back home and puts some of it into play. As the week progressed with Danielle, I started to see a Danielle that I think had been there all the time, that was just hidden behind um, insecurity. Well, your mom sent something. I have a letter for you. And so I want to give it to you. And you it's up to you if I stay while you read it, yeah, I or I can leave you alone and let no, you, you can stay. I don't mind. It made me feel important to her. It made me feel that she had really grown close to me and trusted me. Dear Danielle, you need to surround yourself with the people deserving your friendship, not waste your time with the phonies who want to bring you down. It hurt me so much to see you wanting to follow people, going nowhere in life. Always be true to yourself. We all get lost, but I'm here to tell you I'm never going to give up on you. Remember who you are and know what you're worth. But most of all, always know that you are never alone. I'm always here for you. I love you. Love, Mom. Has she ever written you a letter before? But she's told you those things before? I just never really. It's different when it's in writing, isn't it? Uh -huh. After reading the letter, I feel mad at myself, basically. You know, everything in that letter is true. It really is. And I've, known, I've only known you for just a little bit of time, and I feel the same way. You have a good mom, a mom that loves you. I think you have a mom that would do anything for you. You know? It's OK to cry. Tears cleanse the soul. It's not good to hold everything in. Let it out. It made me realize, like, I need to treat my mom way better, because she doesn't deserve the way I treat her at all. You know what it tells me? Danielle's not selfish. Danielle's a good person. And Danielle's easy to love. <laughs> I hope those words taught Danielle a lot. I hope that she takes heed to those things. Uh, our kids uh, have some of their friends over. And we want you to meet them, because we're think we think they're ex exceptionally good kids and people. And you're part of us now for this week. So I want you to have a good time. Okay. I want you to conduct yourself as a young lady and a young man should. All right. Yes, OK, let's go. I just wanted Chris and Danielle to see that there's a way to have fun without breaking all the rules. No, I just wanted, like, a little squishy. Then hold it right above yeah, your fire. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What? And, and just kind of rotate it. I feel like I'm catching on fire. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to be drinking or going to clubs to have fun. We can have fun in our, literally in our backyard. And it was really cool to know that. Who wants to make a California boy some s'mores? <laughs> Perfect. I quit drinking during this week, and it actually hasn't been that bad. I think it was kind of good to go stand up there near the bonfire because the people were nice, and we kind of got a break. I made the perfect s'more. Yeah. Ooh, that is the perfect s'more. <laughs> Coming up, reunions for the teens and their parents. Are you a good boy? But are Chris and Danielle ready to change? I'd really like to know if you'd make a commitment to your mom to simply be a man of your word. Hey, Chris. Yeah? Come on down here and let's visit a minute. All right? Yeah. I called him down to talk with him just to kind of reaffirm some of the things that we had tried to instill in him. It won't be long till uh, your mom's going to be here. So when you go back, I just want you to like we said here, I want you to man up, take responsibility. OK? All right. So if you don't mind going up there and kind of pack things up. All right. I haven't had a drink all week. I feel kind of good. 
I really miss my mom. I haven't seen her in a while, and I kind of wonder what kind of reaction she's going to have when she sees me. Hey, Danielle? Yeah? Can you come visit with me a little bit? Yes. I've really bonded with her, and I'm going to miss her. But I'm also excited about what she can take back with her also. Um, your mom's going to be here in just a little bit, so I want you to go upstairs and get all your things together. And um, just kind of overlook everything, make sure you don't forget anything. My first thing, my mom, I hope I don't cry. I just really want to give her a big hug and tell her how much I love her and how much I missed her. If Chris hasn't changed, I'm not sure what my next step will be. Go get your mom, bring her in. Christopher, <laughs> how are you doing? All right. Are you a good boy? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah? No oh, good. I was excited, actually, to see Chris. Have you been listening and talking nicely? Somewhat. Somewhat? <laughs> this alcohol, he said it was very important to him. Does your mom know how much the alcohol means to you? I think so. I told him that I wouldn't ask him to do anything that I wouldn't do myself. So uh, what did I do, Chris? He dumped out his tobacco in the grass. And I haven't had any tobacco whatsoever. Since. Oh. It's not. Maybe I got to make this deal with my mom. I mean, I'll stop drinking if she stops smoking. We went to do a project for someone who can't do it themselves at this point. They're sick. OK. It's yeah. not easy to build a fence. Chris, what were we going to get in return? Nothing. Nothing. Just to know that we did the right thing to help somebody out, wasn't it? It felt good to build a fence. Oh, I'm about ready to faint. Yeah. He has a big heart. I hope that's something that's going to carry over in this, this, this new part of his life, the mm -hmm. manhood part. Right. And I told him immediately, you and his little brother are counting on him. Mm -hmm. You know, set limitations and set boundaries. Right. And you obey them because she's your authority. He's not a little boy. He's a big boy, and he can. There's a lot that he can do to help out. I can maybe cook you dinner before you come home, and wash the dishes, and you could go get rest. That would be nice. I'd really like to know if you'd make a commitment to me and to my, and to your mom to simply be a man of your word. I'm gonna try. I mean it. I'm real proud of you. All right, we'll see you outside. All righty. Chris means the whole wide world to me, and I love him very much. Well, I know y'all got a long trip. When I see my mom struggling with some of the chores around the house, I could just give her a hand and help her out. Bye, babe. Second, Mom. I would like to see Chris take some of the things that he's learned this week and put it into action back at home and become the young man that we know he can be. Chris can be a winner. In my mind, he is already. Did you miss me? Just a little. I missed you just a little bit. Just a little bit? Yeah. I hope Danielle learned to appreciate her life and the love that our family has for her. Right now, I miss my mom more than ever. Like, it's indescribable. Like, I just can't wait to see her. There's your mom. So go get your mom and bring her in. Are you okay? You're busy, but there are some What's the matter? I miss you. Oh, God, I love you. When Danielle came out and hugged me, it made me feel wonderful. Hey, Hi. hey, how are you? I'm good. I'm Christy Sheffield. When Danielle's mom was coming in, I was feeling a little bit anxiety, uh, knowing some things that we were going to have to tell her about how the week went. In the beginning, she didn't care about anybody but herself. Uh, everything was whatever. And so we had a few moments. Uh, it wasn't fun at all after I had it to consequences. You want consequences? Know, do you want to know what it was? I had to dig postals. Oh my God. With a postal digger. In the beginning, I, I wouldn't really do it. And then 
I had no choice but to do it. We had a standoff. But throughout that, I tried to stress the fact to her that it's not important to get the last word. Um, you have to learn to pick your battles. Set boundaries and stay with them. Yeah. But you can understand, hopefully, what your mom is. She's just trying to raise you to be a, a, a young the lady. The best you could be, for the sure. The best you can be. Whatever you say goes, and that's it. There's going to be no more last words or refusing to do whatever I feel like doing. I think I just went down the wrong road, and I lost myself, but now I'm back, and yeah. I know you're welcome. I love you. I love you too. We've enjoyed her, and I appreciate you letting us have this time with her. I appreciate you having yeah. her. All right. My only hope for Danielle is she sticks with it, that she has enough confidence and strength in herself to follow through. And I hope that her mom will encourage that and help it in a positive way. We're truly blessed. Thanks. You know that, too. Yeah, I do. <laughs> when I get back home, I'm going to definitely show more respect to my mom and give her all the respect she deserves. Yeah, Thank you I'm for everything. I'm really proud that she is willing to make those changes and realizes those are the changes she needs to make. Bye, Danielle. Bye. Bye, bye I thought with Danielle and her mom, some clear lines and boundaries have to be set for her, and she has to keep her in check. It's a very rewarding feeling to know that you may have changed two lives forever. <laughs> They're a little tougher than me. I guess I'm not that tough on you. Yeah, you're not a strict parent, but you're going to become one. I love you, Danielle. I love you, too.